Okay, um, it's my uh, pleasure to introduce the second speaker for today, uh, Jose Manuel Gomez from the University of Colombia in Medellin. And he'll be talking about uh, the second homotopy group of the space of commuting in tuples and Lie groups. Okay, well, um, th thanks, Simon, and thanks uh, uh, the organizers for inviting me. Um, and also thanks to Chihad for, you know, uh, organizing this and like having the, the, the original idea. Um, I think it's been great. Uh, so thank you so much. Um, what I'm going to be talking about is um, a paper uh, that is a joint work with Alejandro Adam and, and Simon uh, Grishaffer, and then whose, whose title is on the second homotopy group of the space of commuting entropies in big groups. Um, since this talk is 45 minutes and, and that work is it's got a lot of things, I'm not gonna try to talk about everything. So I'm just gonna concentrate on a particular case of a computation of the second homotopy group, homotopy group of uh, commuting tuples. Um, so I'll try to just talk about that. Okay, so the setup is basically the same as in the previous talks. So I'm going to Assume that G is a compactly group, although this is not necessary. I'm going to concentrate on that case. Uh, the results that um, one has for compact lead groups can be extended to um, non compact groups uh, in some cases due to a result of one's uh, auto and Alexander Petit. Uh, so, so I'm just going to concentrate on that in the compact case for simplicity. Uh, so, as in the previous talk, we're going to be talking about the set of homomorphisms from set M to G, and that can be identified uh, um, easily with the set of uh, N tuples in G that are ordered uh, and that are pairwise commuting. Uh, we're going to endow the, this set with the subspace topology as a subspace of G to the N, and we're going to call that the space of commuting N tuples. So that's the one of the main objects that I've uh, focused my research in the past decade. Um, basically, started to think about these gadgets because uh, when, when I started working as a postdoc now a, a long time ago with Alejandro Adam, he proposed to me to, to work on that and then I uh, quickly uh, fell in love with these objects because it's, they're really simple to define but complicated to study. Turns out for this talk, we are also going to be looking at the spaces of representations. They're gonna play a key role in this talk. So the idea is very simple. The group G acts by conjugation on the space of uh, commuting in tuples. So you basically can conjugate simultaneously a commuting in tuple, and that's also a commuting in tuple. And then if you modify that conjugation action, then you, uh, you obtain what is called the representation space. Um, so the representation space um, is a good friend of the uh, th physics faults because uh, it turns out that the, this guy um, can, be a, can be thought of as the, as the modular space of flat connections of principal G bundles over the n torus, and then that guy appears naturally in some quantum field theory. So this, this has been studied quite a bit, especially for n equals two and equal n equals three. Okay. So uh, in the past few years, I've been interested in, in computing the low dimensional homotopy groups of these spaces. I first started thinking about pi zero, which is the set of pi connected components. And as n changes and depending on the group, that can be quite tricky. And then um, uh, uh, I also started uh, in a joint work with uh, Juan Soto and Alexander Petter, we start to think about the fundamental group uh, of, of this guy, where you take uh, the base point of, of, of the space of commuting n tuples, the, the trivial commuting n tuple, which is the one that you obtain by putting in all entries the identity. So obviously that that is uh, commuting n tuple, and then we're going to use that as the base point. And uh, as in the other talks, we're uh, also going to be using the connected component that contains that that base point, which we denote by adding uh, this one over here, okay? So, so one, one first result that we obtain, and this basically, uh, I guess the first one that, that started to think about computing fundamental groups, so this, this guy was Enrique, Enrique Torres, Torres Giese. And then Enrique uh, computed uh, 
by hand in, in a really nice way, uh, the case of SO3. And it was very geometric and very pleasant to see how he did it. And then uh, by playing with some other group uh, for, for SU2, we started to see a pattern uh, that in, in the fundamental group of the commuting intervals. And then with some effort, um, we, we were able to show that the fundamental group of when G is compact, the inclusion of the commuting intervals inside of G to the end uh, induces an isomorphism <clears throat> at the level of uh, fundamental group. Uh, the idea to prove this result is, is kind of basic and is, is, is the, one, the same one that Dan was uh, talking about yesterday, which is uh, inside the commuting intervals, you have <clears throat> some uh, commuting intervals that you can call regular, which, is, which are the ones that you have control over. And then, so there is a good part, which is really big. And then, then there is the, 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 there is the uh, irregular part, which what are the intuples that causes that this space um, is, is not a smooth manifold. So, they, so the, the, commuting, the commuting intuples, if G is compact, is a algebraic real variety, but it has singularities. And the singularities are coming from the fact that the centralizers of different elements uh, change a lot as you move through, through G. So, so then using um, an idea similar to the one that Dan was talking about yesterday, one is able to show that if you just look at the, the regular parts, <clears throat> you are able to move around any, any loop uh, into the regular part, and then, and then you have control over that, and then you get this result. <clears throat> uh, throughout this talk, um, we're going to explore the, the problem of computing uh, the second uh, homotopy group of these spaces for, for, for a G a compactly group. And we're going to concentrate on the case when n equals two, which corresponds to the commuting n tuples. And we're also for simplicity, we're going to assume that G is simply connected, uh, simple and compact, although by, by using the, classific the usual classification theorems uh, of compactly groups, one can extend these, uh, not just to simply connected and simple Lie groups, but to all, all compact Lie groups. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about that right now. Mm, I should say that the, the, the initial motivation for this computation, what, what it is. And um, so I, I came across a, a really nice paper by uh, Dan Ramras and uh, Bernardo Villarreal, where they, um, explicitly gave a geometric construction for a principal, a, a principal G bundle uh, that was trivial as a principal G bundle, uh, but admitted uh, a non-trivial transitionally commutative structure. Um, and they, they did that for the group O2. And it was really nice. It was very geometric and very transparent. Uh, so I, I try to really understand what was going on and, and try to extend that to groups that were connected because the, the main point in, in that construction was that a O2 was not connected. So they play around with the two connected components. So, and it, it became quite clear that to, to be able to extend their ideas to a, a, a compactly group that was connected and say simply connected, one would need to compute the second homotopy group of the commuting pairs. So that was the, the initial motivation for this problem. Um, one thing that I should say is that if if you uh, assume that uh, if you can if you restrict yourself to study a uh, commuting tuples, and then you you assume that uh, n is g is simply connected, then then on the one hand the the space of commuting pairs is going to be path connected. That follows from the fact that uh, if G is simply connected, the, this, the, the centralizers of an element is, is also connected. Uh, that's a well-known fact, which I believe is due to Borel. And on the other hand, uh, the, the space of commuting pairs uh, in G is also going to be simply connected due to the result with uh, Alejandra, Alexandra Peter and Juan Soto. So, 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 that, so that is going to make uh, life simple. So basically, I just want to point out that fact. So for now, um, since our assumption is that G is simply connected and simple and compact, then the space of commuting pairs 
is going to be simply connect. Okay. All right. Now, so the, 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 the initial idea, so we want to compute the second homotopy group of the commuting pairs. Okay. So that is the, the problem at hand. So we want to compute this. Um, so the first observation is due to, due to the fact that this guy is simply connected, then one can use a Hurley Rich theorem, which uh, to obtain that you can compute the second homotopy group just by looking at the second homology group. Okay. And then you say, oh, that makes it really simple. And then what we say, okay, I'm just gonna try to compute the second homology group. But then as we have seen, that's not so easy. I mean, in the previous talk, it became really clear. Um, one attempt that I tried to do a few years ago, and even for the unit, special unitary groups, is to, uh, as I said before, you can think about the space of commuting pairs as a filter space where you, you know, filter by the set, by, by uh, the singularities that you have which is more or less what, what the previous talk was about. And basically he uh, uh, the, the, the author considered the top, the top layer. So, so I try to do that, but, but then it becomes a, 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 a quite a big mess. You can, you can say something about the pieces, but then putting them together is a nightmare. And so basically I, I, was, not, I was not able to say anything about that. So by expressing uh, the second homotopy group um, as the second homology group for the commuting pairs under our assumptions, you don't really gain that much. So it's, in my opinion, it's, it is, it's as complicated as computing the second homotopy group. Okay. But then um, here comes something weird that one would do. So basically, to compute a homology of the Borel construction, one uh, uses the, the cell spectral sequence using the homology of the, uh, 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 of, the, of the G space. We're gonna play this game, but the other way around. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna use the Borel construction to, to compute the, the second homology of the, of the commuting pair. So remember that G acts by conjugation, so you can see, um, so the commuting pairs is a G space, and then you can you can uh, use the Borel construction, and then you have the spectral sequence. Now, um, one thing that I should say at this point is that the rank of this group you you can compute, and then uh, you could try to do that using the 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 Poincaré, the Poincaré polynomial that was derived by um, Ramras and Stafa. But um, um, I was not able to obtain an explicit answer for all the groups using that formula. And that's the reason that I asked the question when, when Mentor was giving the talk. I was not able to compute, at least in, for, 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 for the second homology, what, what the rank was. Turns out that you, for, for commuting N2 holes, you, there is a, a little nice argument using representation theory that you can use to, to derive the rank of the, of the second homology group. It turns out that, turns out that the, the, the second homology of uh, commuting n tuples with, if we restrict to just uh, the, 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 the path connected components that contains the identity, if you do that with rational coefficients, then that basically is gonna give you Q to the n choose two. So that tells you that the rank uh, of that uh, with integer coefficients, the rank is going to be n choose two. Um, so that tells you in particular that uh, the second homotopy group of the com uh, commuting n two poles is going to be uh, is going to be a free group of rank n choose two plus uh, 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 some finite abelian group. Um, the fact, the point is that uh, depending on n, the there will be torsion. Okay. Uh, but we will see, and this is quite surprising, that when n equals two, there is not going to be torque. Okay. Now, as I said before, uh, one tool that we're gonna use to compute the second homology group of the commuting pairs is by looking at the, the Borel construction, which we, 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 we know fits into a vibration sequence over the classifying space of G with fiber, uh, the commuting pairs. 
um, since we are uh, assuming that G is simply connected, then uh, it's pretty straightforward to see in the search spectral sequence that the, homo the second homology uh, or, of the chameleon pairs can be identified with the second homology of the Borel construction. So as I said before, um, this is something that one would do the, in the other dire direction. So we, instead of going from the Borel construction to the, the homology of the, of the fiber, we're gonna go the other way around. Why would you do that? And the reason for that is that on the Borel construction, you, you have another tool, which is a, a Seagull's type spectral sequence. And that's what we're going to use. So that's gonna be the, the, the key ingredient here. So we're gonna take a look at the Borel construction and, and we're, going to, uh, we're going to see that the chameleon pairs is a, a, a GCW complex. And then looking at the filtration, the, the, the skeletal filtration, then one can run a, a spectral sequence in the, in, in the same type that uh, a Seagull constructed uh, the, the spectral sequence for equivalent K theory. And in, that, in this case, we obtain a nice spectral sequence, which is the main tool that we use to compute the second homology of the Borel construction. Okay, so the, the first observation is that when G is a compact group, um, the space of commuting pairs is a GCW complex. So, there are many ways to see this, um, but when the group is simply connected and simple, one can actually obtain an explicit GCW complex structure. And the idea is pretty simple. Um, so one starts with, uh, so let's, let, let us think about, uh, first about uh, the case of, of T. So let us fix at maximal torus, which I'm gonna denote by T. And then I'm gonna call W the, 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 wild, the corresponding wild group. Uh, as in the previous talk, uh, we know that T mod out by the, by the wild group is, is actually homeomorphic to, the, to a wild alcove. And in fact, that wild alcove can give you a way to obtain um, um, triangulation, a smooth tri triangulation of the maximal torus T and it can be done equivalently. So basically what you can do is if you see the, uh, the wild alcove um, inside the maximal torus by the, the inverse of the exponential map, which is in this case uh, restricted to, to that set, a, a homeomorphism to the wild alcove, and then you look at all the possible W translates, that gives you um, a, a triangulation of the, uh, a smooth triangulation of the of the W, a W equivalent triangulation of the, of, of, of the, of, of the maximal torus T. Okay, so that, and that's pretty nice. And, and it's, it's really nice because you have control of uh, a combinatorial control uh, of the cells because it, basically uh, you are looking at the faces of the alcove and, and, and basically you can parameterize that in a combinatorial way using the roots, which is basic, basically what was done in the previous talk. Now, uh, you can extend that to obtain a W cross W um, a, a triangulation on, on T square. But we don't want that. We want uh, W acting diagonally. So it's pretty simple to obtain a, a triangulation in that sense by, by restriction. So basically, you, you, what one does is basically looking at double cosets, and then you obtain a, a triangulation of the smooth manifold P cross T. Uh, seen as a W as a W equivalent money, and then a basic idea is to promote that C, uh, WCW complex structure to um, to the commuting pairs, uh, and then one observes that um, G acts on the commuting pairs, and that that action has one key property, which is the isotropy group subgroups are of maximal rank, and the T fixed point set is precisely T square. Uh, the problem is that the, uh, the, the centralizers here are not path connected. So if they were path connected, then in a, in a paper with Alejandro, um, uh, we proved that when you have connected and maximal rank uh, isotropy, then having GCW complex structures on the space is equivalent to having WCW complex structures on the T-point set. 
but uh, that, that doesn't apply here because the, the centralizers, the, the isotropies of groups are not connected. However, that idea can be used and then by hand you can, uh, using that explicit uh, W, C, W com complex structure and T-square, you can show that uh, you can promote it to a G, C, W complex structure on the, the computer. Once you have that, then you can uh, look at the uh, skeletal filtration. And then as I said before, you obtain a spectral sequence in, in the sense of Siegel. And we refer to that spectral sequence as Breton spectral sequence. So, so the E2 term of that spectral sequence is precisely uh, a Breton type uh, spectral sequence with uh, local coefficients. And the local coefficients are given precisely uh, by taking the homology of, of the, so if, if you take a cell of the of, um, a, a homogeneous space of the form G mod K, the, the local coefficient applied to it, uh, it, it gives you the, 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 the homology of the classifying space of, of K, okay? Good, so let us play with that uh, spectral sequence. So that's gonna be the, 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 key, the, the key tool in this talk. So we're gonna run that spectral sequence, spectral sequence precisely for the case of comedian pairs. Now you can define the Bredon's uh, uh, spectral sequence, uh, but the, sorry, you can, def, you can define these Bredon uh, groups, the Bredon homology groups that appear in the second page in many ways um, that can be done functorially. I, I usually try to do things by hand. And there is one way to do this in a, some sort of cellular chain complex. And that gives you some idea of what you have to do. So basically what you have to do is you, you look at all the equivariant cells of certain dimension, and then you can construct a chain complex where um, you apply the, the homology of, of the stabilizers, and then you take a direct sum over all cells, okay? So basically what, what you start to think about here is that in order to compute the E2 term of this, this spectral sequence, you need to know the homology of the classifying spaces of the, of, of the centralizers, which are this, the isotopy groups here. So that's the key point here. So if you want to, if you have some hope of, of calculating the E2 term of this spectral sequence, you need to understand the isotope, isotropy subgroups, which in this case are the centralizers of commuting pairs. So that's, that's something that is going to require some work and that's basically where the main uh, problems start to appear. Okay, so basically what we want to understand is what is happening with centralizers of commuting tuples. Okay. Now, um, in order to understand what's going on with these centralizers, I'm going to fix some notation which is similar to what has been established in the in the previous talks. I'm just gonna go through this quickly. So we're going to choose, um, we're gonna take the, the Lie algebra of G, we're gonna complexify it. And then I would choose as the Cartan's of algebra the, that complexification, the complexification of the Lie algebra of the maximal torus, which I already fixed before. And then we look at the corresponding root system. Now for every root, in the root system, and I'm, here I'm working with the real roots. I'm dividing basically by the two pi i, the, so that we obtain real value roots. And then, so I'm, as usual, I'm gonna denote by uh, alpha hat, the core root associated to the to, to a root alpha. Uh, we're going to fix <clears throat> a set of simple roots, and then I'm going to denote by alpha zero, the lowest root, so that minus alpha zero is the highest root. And here's the point, the, the, the highest root can be, can be written as a linear combination of uh, the, the core root uh, corresponding to the highest uh, root can be written uh, as a linear combination of, of these core roots. And the, the, integer, the, the, the linear combination is with integer coefficients and then these integers uh, are called the, the core root integers. And these guys are going to play a key role throughout this computation. Now, it is not surprising that these guys appear and, and we've seen this before. Uh, we, we, for example, uh, in the, the famous theorem of Fried, Hopkins and Telemann, 
these guys uh, where they compute the twisted K theory of G acting by itself uh, by conjugation, uh, these guys appear because the the basically uh, I forget what it's called the Coxeter number the dual Coxeter number is precisely the sum of of this um, quad root integers plus one. Okay, we're going to uh, see why these guys appear in this computation. Now we're going to set um, uh, corresponding to the lowest root. We're going to set the integer to be one. Okay. Um, so just for your reference, I'm going to uh, show you a table where you can see those quad root integers. And what I like to point out are these uh, two parts here, which is are the basically the easy cases which are the special unitary groups and the symplectic groups. And those are the easy cases precisely because the core integers are all equal to one. Uh, things are going to become complicated once you have, once you have core integers um, that are different from one. And I'll try to explain why that is the case. Okay, so, um, so, uh, for for simply connected and simple groups, the only ones that that have all uh, quarter in integers equals to one are precisely the special unitary groups and the uh, symplectic groups. The other ones have uh, other other uh, they, they have other integers. Okay, now uh, let us recall that classic result of Borel's that that says in fact that if you have a Compare a connected Lie group whose fundamental group is torsion free, then the centralizer or any element is connected. Okay. And here, here is the, the assumption you need to assume that pi one is torsion free. Okay. So that is the centralizer of one element. We're interested in the centralizer of two elements that are commuted. But what happens is the following, and this is what makes everything more complicated for computer commuting pairs. And it is the fact that when you have, you know that if even if G is interconnected, well, you know that um, the centralizer, the, the centralizer is, 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 um, is connected. However, that centralizer, which I'm gonna call uh, the isotropy G sub X, may not be, to, uh, who's, 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 its fundamental group might not be torsion free. Why does that? Um, the reason why that is important is that if you want to um, compute the centralizer of a, of a commuting tuple, then you can rewrite that as the centralizer in the in the group G sub X of the element G. Now the problem is that this guy may not be may have torsion in its fundamental group, so you cannot apply again the previous result, and that is exactly the reason. The, that why these, these commuting tuples are not path connected. Now, here's the situation. Um, if the centralizers are connected, then commuting pairs are going, the space of commuting pairs are going to be path connected. And if the centralizers of a commuting tuple are connected, then the space of commuting triples are gonna be path connected. So this is exactly the reason why you can find groups for which the commuting triples are not path connected. For example, in spin seven, you can find a tuple whose um, centralizer has two path, con path connected components. And the reason, on the underlying reason for that is that precisely you can find an element whose um, centralizer has torsion in its fundamental group. In that case, it's going to be set mod two, okay? So this is exactly the reason why you, the, the path connected components, the, the, the commuting end tuple with n greater or equal than three uh, are not in general path connected. Now, uh, and this, this is where connect, uh, the, this is where the core root integers appear. And the reason that they appear is precisely that the torsion of the, uh, the fundamental group of the centralizers can be computed using the core root integer. Okay, so um, let us call A the, the, the closed uh, wild alcove that, uh, that is containing the wild chamber de determined by the simple roots. And then we're gonna fix the, we're gonna choose the wild alcove that contains the origin, okay? And <clears throat> as it was mentioned in the previous talk, the wild alcove is uh, an R-dimensional simplex 
that is cut by the hyperplanes where the roots are equal to zero, and also the, 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 the a fine hyperplane where the lowest root, root is equal to minus one, which is the same as saying that the highest root is equal to one. Okay, for example, in the case of SU2, one has to be like this. So basically, you have the wild alcove, and then you have here alpha zero equals to minus one, and that's going to be your alcove. This is the origin. Okay. Now, um, if you want to understand what happens with the centralizers, then you may as well look at an element that is the, the, the exponential of an element that is in the in the in the wild alcove because everybody is conjugated to one of those. And it's actually conjugated to a unique one. So we may as well assume that x is equal is the exponential of some element that is in the wild alcove. Okay. And uh, here is the point. When you have that notation precisely, the torsion in the the fundamental group of the, the centralizer of an element X written in that way is precisely a cyclic group of order um, the greatest common divisor of uh, these uh, core root integers that are associated to the walls that are that are that don't, do not contain uh, X tilde. Okay. And let me go back to that little table that I show you. So this explains why when you have core root integers that are not equal to one, which is pretty much every group except for the special unitary groups and the symplectic ones, you should expect or you are going to find elements whose centralizer has torsion in the fundamental group. And that would imply that <clears throat> Is the centralizer of computing tuples are not going to be fat on it. Okay. Remember, we want to understand the homology of the classifying space of decentralizers. So this is bad news. They're not connected. Okay, that's going to make it more, way more complicated. Okay. Now, one one thing that I should say is that uh, precisely this distortion can also be rewritten as the uh, fundamental group or the derived group of the centralized. Now, <clears throat> what does that have to do with a uh, pi zero of centralizers of commuting pairs? Precisely, uh, they're connected by the following result, which says that if you have commuting pairs, then you, you can, you, there is an inclusion of the, the set of uh, path connected components in the centralizer of uh, X and Y and the fundamental group of the derived group of uh, the centralizer of X. Obviously, X and Y, X is not, uh, is not playing a special role, so that also applies for Y. Um, so that tells you that there might be, that explains why you can have um, some commuter pairs <clears throat> that are going to um, have centralizers that are not path connected. Exactly uh, describing the pairs that are not going to be path connected, the, whose interest is not going to be path connected, is actually not so easy. Okay. However, using the previous result, we, we can con conclude the following, which is going to play a key role in our computation is that, so from what we can gather from, from this previous result, so we know that the path connected components can be. Uh, can be included in the fundamental group of the derived group, which we know is a cyclic group, and we know its order. By looking at the <clears throat> core root integers, uh, uh, the different possibilities, one realizes <clears throat> quickly that um, the order of those, um, of, of the torsion is not gonna be bigger than six. So, it's, so basically from that table, one can, and this result, one can conclude the following, uh, which is that the, the centralizer is going to be, first of all, is gonna be, we already knew it's gonna be uh, a maximal rank subgroup, <clears throat> but the key point is that it's path connected components, the set of path connected components, which in this case is gonna be a group, is gonna be a finite group of cyclic order of at most six, okay? So it is cyclic and its order is and most six. So <clears throat> bad news, uh, the centralizers are not connected. Good news is uh, it has at most six path connected components and that group 
or, or the group of path connected components is gonna be seeked. Okay, so uh, having said that, we can go back to the, the main spectral sequence and we're going to be concentrated on, uh, in computing what happens in total degree two. So let us look at what happens in total degree two. Let us, let us begin with Q equals zero. And that's the easy case, or well, kind of easy. So because when Q equals zero, you need to compute the, the zero homology of the classifying space of the centralizers, but, but the, even though the, the centralizers are not path connected, its classifying spaces are going to be path connected. So, so the homology is going to be constant, and then we're going to be uh, having the constant coefficient system. Now, in Bredon homology, when you have the uh, constant coefficient system, you obtain the regular homology of the quotient space, which in this case is the representation space. Oh, that's good. That's pretty good. So you just have to uh, compute the homology of the representation spaces. For commuting tuples, it turns out that this space, uh, the space, the representation space of Z2 to, to G can be identified with the modular space of semi-stable principal bundles over an elliptic curve with structure group, the complexification of G. That's real nice, but the, the key point is that that gadget has been studied quite a bit. And there is a, this has been proven by many people, one of them, Lodenga, it tells you that that, that space is gonna be, the representation space is gonna be a weighted projective space. And that makes a huge difference. So that's, that's, that is what is what we're going to use to compute the, the, the case uh, when Q equals zero. Uh, let me remind you really quickly what the weighted projective space is. If you have a R plus one tuple, <clears throat> then uh, you can have of, of integers that are positive. You can have the group uh, as one acting on the on the as the unit sphere of the of C to the R plus one. And the point is that basically you just uh, use the coefficients to uh, Weight the the action, so you put some powers onto the onto the exponents of lambda, and then if you put uh, all the the w's i's equal to one, then you record the usual uh, projective space. So the the the, the, the weighted projective space is precisely the quotient of the sphere modified by that action of s one with those weights. Okay. Now. Um, the, the result of Lodenga and other, and other folks uh, tells you that precisely you can identify the representation space with the, with the um, weighted projective space corresponding to the, the core integers where you add the one that corresponds to, remember uh, this one is equal to one, okay? And that is pretty good because uh, on the other hand, Kawasaki co had computed the homology group of the weighted projective spaces. And in homology, they behave exactly like a regular projective space. So the homology is, is concentrated on even degrees. And it's uh, free and a free, free abelian group of rank one uh, in, the, in the appropriate dim dimensions, uh, in the appropriate even dimensions. In particular, that shows you that the second homology group of the representative spatial space is going to be uh, the integers. So that gives you the, the, the E2 term in total degree two when Q equals zero. So let me show you a picture of how the spectral sequence looks like. So remember, we are interested in the total degree two, which is this part. I guess we also need to think about this little guy. So what, what, what we have so far is that we have computed successfully uh, the case for P equals two and Q equals zero. In fact, this guy, as uh, these guys, uh, we already know, we also know from the previous computation. Okay, so that's what we have so far. So we have um, three things left to compute this group, this group, and this group. Okay, so let us move to the case of Q equals two. So then one has to compute the zero Bredon homology with coefficients, uh, here is commuting pairs with coefficients in this um, coefficient system. And um, then, then one can show you uh, using the fact that the centralizers of commuting pairs have maximal rank, and then the, the, the path-connected components form a cyclic group of uh, finer order 
then with some using the explicit description of the Breton homology groups, in this case is degree zero, so you, you can actually write down explicitly what's going on, you can show using those two facts that, that, that this, guy, this guy also vanishes. Okay, so, so that's good. Um, so you start to, to have some hope that you can pull this off. But then you hit uh, the, the line Q equals one. And that, that is the most complicated one and the one that we were stuck on for some time. Um, so, so, for, so basically to, to finish the computation, we need to um, concentrate on that case, Q equals one, and then we need to compute those Breton homology groups for P equals zero and P equals one. What is the problem? The problem is precisely that when you evaluate the coefficient system, then in, in that in those orbit spaces, you need to compute precisely uh, the, the path connected components of the centralizers. We know that they're cyclic and they have order on mode six, but explicitly computing the, them for every pair, it, it's a nightmare. It's not, it's not, it's not easy, it's very hard. It's, but even for explicit examples for, for, for spin seven, is very hard. So, so at this point, uh, I was um, basically about to give up and throw the towel uh, to the trash can. And then, and then Simon said, not so fast. Um, so it, this is an idea that uh, Simon came up with um, and said, what if we look one plan at a time? So, so here comes the explicit structure that we constructed before with that explicit CW GCW complex structure, if you work one prime at a time and just look at the, 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 the element, the pairs, such that the centralizers, when you um, localize a P, are in, that doesn't give you a trivial group, that's a, a subcomplex. So that's good. Uh, and if you, if you simplify the coefficient and just, we just rewrite it like, rewrite it like this, so, so we were working with another coefficient, but, but, but why I show you is sufficient to look at the path connected components. And in this case, you can localize it at, at a prime P. And the point is that um, when you do that, it turns out that if you uh, look one part at a time and take the direct sum, you recover everything. So, so this tells you you can work one part at a time. So that's, that's, that's good news. But then you still have the problem that you need to understand these guys. And, and here comes the uh, way to project the space to the, to the rescue, because what happens is that um, when you restrict in, in when, when G is not um, one of these two groups, and the, 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 what is special about these groups is that when P equals two, then you have a core integers two and four. So that makes uh, everything more complicated. But what, what ends up happening is that when you restrict to this uh, subspace, um, the lo the, this, this local coefficient is constant. So that gives you the quotient, the homology of the regular quotient. More than that, those, the, those, those guys uh, have the homotopy type of another um, uh, way to predict the space that you obtain by removing in the core root integers, the, the, one, the, the integers that are not divisible by P. And this is pretty good. This basically makes your day. Why? Because you already know how the homology of the way to project the spaces are. In particular, they're going to be concentrated on even degrees. So using that, you can show on the one hand that this the the the, the E two term in the position one one is going to vanish. Um, so that was really hard. And then you can also with some uh, folder uh, work, you can also do that for the the cases of E7 and E, um, the ones that are that were not included here for E7 and E8 for the, the prime two. And not only that, you can show the that the that the imposition zero two, the E2 page, it actually gives you set mod D, where D is the dying the Deakin index, which is the, the lower common multiple of the Core integers. So let me um, show you how the, the, after all of this, let me show you how the E2 page looks like in Bredon spectral sequence. So it looks really nice. So basically you 
we get as lucky as you can. Why? Because in total degree two, there is a unique term that is a non-zero and is the, turns out to be the integers. And um, to finish, I guess you need to understand what, I mean, this is good enough to, to compute the second homology because this being a, a finite group, then the kernel of this map, you know, is gonna be isomorphic to the integers. But if you want to compare what happens with the representation spaces, then it's good to know exactly what the kernel is. And it turns out that this map has to be surjective. This differential has to be surjective. And the reason for that is that after all, that, that spectral sequence in the total degree one is going to give you the first homology of the Borel construction, but the Borel construction is also gonna be simply connected. So, so, so this guy, Selmut, he has to, um, has to vanish at some point, but the only differential that can hit it is precisely this one. So that map has to be surjective. Putting all of that together, I'm uh, out of time, but not, not for much, you can obtain the following result, which is one of the uh, main results in, in that joint work with Alejandro Adem and Simon Grishoffer that tells you that if G is simply connected and simple compactly grouped, the second homotopy group of the commuting pairs is isomorph isomorphic to the integers. And not only that, you know what's happening with the quotient map. Uh, when you look at the quotient map and see what happens at the level of the second homotopy groups, it turns out that that guy, both of those, the second homotopy, homotopy group, this guy and this guy are both isomorphic to the integers. It turns out that the, at the level of second homotopy group, that a map is going to be given by multiplication by the Dinkin index. And that's precisely due to the fact that uh, we knew that um, in the E2 page, uh, this guy corresponds to the second homology of, of the representation spaces and the infinity page corresponds to the homology of the commuting pairs, okay? Uh, we derive a lot more things um, for uh, n tuples for the special unitary groups and the suspected groups and also provided geometric generators for these, um, for these classes. But uh, I think this is uh, good enough for 45 minutes talk, which turned out to be 47 minutes talk. So thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, thank you very much, Jose. Are there any questions? Uh, I might have lost a little bit, but what happened to the E7 and E8 case? Probably right, um, right. So for E7 and E8, the only problem is in for the prime two, okay? And let me show you why. Um, so this goes back to that table, table that I showed you before. Um, Where are you, table? Did I pass it already? I think I must have. No, here it is. If you inspect that table, um, even though there are many groups that have different primes, the only one that have, um, so, so, here, so here, for example, E7. E7 is not problematic because you only have the primes two and three, that, but, but they are only the primes. But the problem with E7 and E8 is you have two and four, okay? So, so in particular, that means that phi zero of, a com of, a, of the centralizer of a commuting pair could have two com connected components or four connected components. And uh, knowing which one you have is, is, is really complicated. I don't think, I don't think uh, the geometric structure uh, of, of, of that so space is known. But the way but the way you fix that is by playing, is basically by by brute force, you do what you have to do. You look at where the you have a connected components that have uh, order two and the ones that have order four, and then you play with relative redon homology with some uh, uh, coefficient systems, and then, and basically by brute force, your one is able to show that that, that that vanishes. So basically, those two cases you have to, you have to do by hand with uh, 
some auxiliary results. But the, the key point here is precisely this. I mean, I, I guess what saves the day uh, uh, is that you can say that the, the quotient, so, so we knew that the commuter pairs when you multiply by conjugation, that's the representation space and by your, Lenga, your Lojenga's theorem, that's going to give you a weighted projective space. But what saves the date here is that if you restrict to uh, that subspace where you have, like for example, when you remove these cases, so that will give you, if you restrict to the space of commuting pairs that have, let's say, a path connected components equals to, that, that has order P and more up by conjugation, then that, that space also turns out to have the homotopy type of uh, weighted projective space. In my opinion, that's what saves the day. Um, this computation is, is I mean, the, the case uh, of Q equals one for the special unitary groups and the symplectic groups is trivial because in that case, uh, the, the, the chain complex gives you zero because everything is path connected, the centralized are path connected. So there's nothing to do there. But for the other group, for the other groups is um, really complicated. So I guess the, the main technical part uh, of, of, of the work is precisely uh, figuring out the homotopy type of this. Uh, um, let us call them also, let us call it P versions of the representation spaces. Okay, thanks. Maybe we have uh, time for another short question if there is one. May I have one more question? Is that, is that, is that fine? Yeah, go ahead. So, go so, ahead. so what, um, can you say anything about the other components? Like away from the identity? I mean, I guess oh, this man. alpha um, business won't work, but. but... Um, being honest, uh, nothing smart. I mean, I remember, for spin seven, one could do some, one could say something for spin seven. And the reason that you could say something for spin seven is because the other connected component is a homogeneous space. And so, and it's given because the, the other path connected component arises because, because of what I said before, that you can find a, a commuting pair that that has centralizers with two path connected components. And that guy turns out to be unique up to conjugation. So that tells you that the, the other path connected component is a homogeneous space and using that you can compute it. But then for um, higher ranks, then I think is, is more, way more complicated. I mean, I think the point is that the, 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 the rank of the maximal torus of the of, of on the centralizers are going to be bigger than zero, and then and then it's more it's going to be more complicated. So, uh, the 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 honest the, the honest the honest answer is I don't know. Okay, thanks. Okay, then uh, I think we. Uh... And thank uh, Jose again for his nice talk. Thank you so much. And uh, let me stop the recording.